Greetings Souls here and welcome to Let's Play The Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle Earth. This is the first episode. We need to know how to do battle, how to command armies, how to gather resources before we can do well in combat and perhaps secure a victory. For this game, the tutorial takes the form of a battle school. I guess we're going to school. We are going to start with the world map. Welcome to the Battle for Middle Earth tutorial. Here you will learn the basics of how to lead your forces into war. In the Battle for Middle Earth, it is your goal to defeat the forces of the enemy, capture their lands, and destroy their castles. You will command the armies of good and evil, conquer the lands of your enemy, and seal the fate of the One Ring. There are two main portions of the game, the Living World and Battle Mode. The Living World map will allow you to survey all of Middle-earth, and it is from here that you will make high-level strategic choices. You may left-click to zoom in. When zoomed in, you can decide which territory to conquer in order to collect bonuses for your army. To scroll through the map, push your cursor toward the edge of the screen to move in that direction. When choosing which territory to attack, left-click to select an active army. Then right-click on an enemy region to send your selected army to that location. When you attack an enemy region, you must fight that battle before continuing on. Active battles will be noted by blue arrows pointing to a gold battle marker. Left-click the battle marker to enter battle mode. So that's basically selecting our missions. Now let's take a look at moves and attacks. The most critical portion of the game is Battle Mode. In Battle Mode, you will be tasked with creating castles or camps, collecting resources, and building an army in order to destroy your enemies. Your forces will consist of infantry, creatures, heroes, and structures. To scroll through the map, push your cursor toward the edge of the screen to move in that direction. To move your units, left-click on a soldier to select him. Keep on your guard. Soldiers move in battalions. Selecting a single soldier will select the entire battalion. Right-click on open ground Take this area. to move your battalion to that location. Left-click on open ground to deselect your units. Deselecting your units will help you avoid issuing unintended orders. Notice that your selection icon changes to an attack cursor when you have units selected and move your mouse over an enemy. To attack, select a unit and right-click on the enemy. Attack! Our forces are under attack! To attack enemy structures, select a unit Maintain and right-click on the building. Take their buildings down! Attacking walls and gates works the same way. The only siege weapons like trebuchets may attack walls. We need units to attack with and we need bases to attack from. So, next, bases and units. Camps and castles are at the center of your war effort. When your last camp or castle is destroyed, so are you. So be sure to protect them at all costs. To build a camp or castle, send your forces to a site and left-click on Stand it. Ready. Then left-click on the build button to begin its construction. Once your camp or castle is built, you may begin to construct useful buildings like barracks or stables. To create these buildings, left-click on any circular plot in your castle, then left-click on the building you wish to construct. Gondo 
Hero's new archery range is ready. Infantry, creatures, heroes, and structures cost resources. To get more resources, construct buildings that generate resources, like farms or slaughterhouses. The farm is ready. The amount of resources you possess is displayed at the bottom of the Palantir. To build more troops, select a building that generates troops, such as a barracks or an archery range. Left click on a button to create the desired troop type. Your troops will emerge from the building once they are trained. Archers at the ready! Using buildings causes them to gain veterancy. Soldier battalion standing by! Higher veterancy buildings can often build new troop types or upgrades. We've improved the barracks! Command points represent the number of troops you're allowed to train. You cannot build more troops than you have command points. To get more command points, conquer important territories in Middle-earth. Your command point limit is displayed at the bottom of the Palantir along with your resources. The central building of your castle is the Citadel. If the Citadel is destroyed, you cannot build new buildings and your damaged buildings will not be able to repair themselves. Left click on the plot beneath the Citadel to rebuild it should it be destroyed. Gates can be opened or closed by selecting them and left clicking on the open or close button. Strange how the enemy just collapsed as soon as the tower collapsed. Collateral damage, maybe? Anyway, some units are a little bit more unique and they're known as heroes. The legends of Middle Earth are filled with heroic deeds. The heroes in the battle for Middle Earth are vital to your success in battle. Heroes like Gandalf are stronger than other units and can gain levels as they kill enemies. When left clicking on the hero, we'll let them come. his or her rank is shown on a picture in the Palantir. High-ranking heroes have many abilities. To use an ability, select the hero and left click on the ability. Then right click on the target. Some heroes have passive abilities that do not need to be clicked, such as Aragorn's leadership ability. Heroes may be summoned from citadels. Left click on a citadel and left click on a hero button to summon a hero. I will guide the strength of men. If a hero should fall in battle, he may be revived at your citadel. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. And units level up precisely when they mean to. Heroes have ranks, and units have ranks, or rather, levels. They gain experience points, and they become veterans. So let's take a look at veterancy. As your units vanquish their foes, they will gain veterancy experience. Veteran units deal more damage, are more resistant to enemy attacks, and will heal themselves. There are multiple levels of veterancy, each offering more powerful bonuses. Veteran infantry units are indicated by accompanying banner carriers. Veteran creatures are indicated by improved armor or war paint. Veteran units will also stay with you throughout your campaign. They will retain their veterancy status and upgrades as you progress from mission to mission. Like units, your buildings may increase their veterancy. The more you use a structure, the more potent it becomes. Certain units or upgrades cannot be built until a building gains veterancy. Tower guards, for instance, cannot be trained until the Gondor barracks increases its veterancy level. We guard the White Tower! Heroes have access to special powers. The game is trying to be fair to us, giving us access to some special powers as well. The power of the One Ring and the power of the Evenstar can change the fate of Middle-earth. 
The One Ring or the Even Star grows in power as you destroy your enemies or conquer regions of Middle Earth. The amount of power points you have available to spend will appear on the One Ring or Even Star at the top of the Palantir. Left click on the One Ring or Even Star when in battle mode to view your powers. When you have collected enough power points, you may select new powers to aid you. Your purchased powers will appear on the left side of the screen just above the Palantir. When your power is ready, you may left click on it to use it. Some powers, such as Gandalf the White, are passive and do not need to be clicked on again once they are purchased. Thank you for watching the Battle for Middle Earth tutorial. Follow these simple guidelines and you will soon dominate the whole of the land. Good luck! Thank you, we need the good luck. Anyway, you saw on the screen that there was a cursor, like the final part of the tutorial. <laughs> That's not my cursor, my cursor is over here. <laughs> so I think they're just like recording the map, like the transition on the map together with the cursor. <laughs> kind of confusing, right? <laughs> anyway, that's it for the tutorials. It's not an interactive tutorial, so let's see how effective it is in helping players remember what to do in the game. So I hope to see you next episode when we begin the campaign missions for Let's Play Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-earth. Thank you so much for watching, that's all I have for now, have a nice day.